How are you enjoying the shock and awe, General? So here are the units that you're gonna use when playing with General Granger. Missile Defenders, Pathfinders, Combat Chinooks, King Raptors, Aurora Alpha Bombers, Stealth Fighters, Comanche, and Microwave Tank. Now here are a few concerns when you are building General Granger's base. Uh, you'll be sure to build a lot of airfields, but most important is to space them well. Because if the enemy launches an attack, such as A-10, Thunderbolts, Petra Gunship, whatever, just make sure he can only destroy one airfield. Talking about airfields, you should always build empty airfields around your base. Because if the enemy managed to destroy one of your airfields that your planes were using, make sure the planes can use an empty emergency airfield. And the other thing that you should worry about is always keep your planes in the air by using the guard command. This is because if the enemy launches an attack such as an uh, anthrax bomb or a nuclear missile that will leave radiation, uh, your planes won't take damage if they are keeping in the air. As for base defenses, here's what I do. I got 4 Patriot Missile Launchers, 1 Firebase, 2 Comanches and a Firebase full with 2 Pathfinders and 2 Missile Defenders. Here's what they all do. You know what the Firebase and the Missile Patriots uh, do, right? The Comanche is only to ambush enemy artillery. If there is enemy artillery on the way, I just send them and they, they can go intercept it. They destroy it, they get back. Now the firebase is equipped with pathfinders to quickly kill infantry and two missile defenders to destroy tanks. I know that in the beginning you don't want to have pathfinders, use rangers, they won't do the job so well, but it's better than nothing. Now another way to defend your base and all it should have is stealth fighters around this area. Simple reason is because the stealth fighter will weaken enemy forces before they reach your base defenses and this is the most uh, probable area for having enemy artillery firing at your base defenses. So, if the enemy tries to attack you with all artillery, just make sure you have stealth fighters flying around. Now, when fighting the Chinese, you have to worry about the Gatling base defenses because they will rapidly shut down all your planes. So, there are two ways to overcome this obstacle. Number one, you use your Aurora Alpha bombers to destroy them. Or number two, you use your microwave tanks to disable them. The other way is more complex. You're going to use your microwave tank to disable enemy buildings. But, of course, you must protect your microwave tanks while they perform that action. So, you load up a combat chinook with two snipers and six missile defenders. And just to make sure, take one or two Comanches. Or three. Now, these units on the air will protect your ground units. So let's get the plan on. You can also use this technique on the GLA, but since you got laser point defenses, there's not really a point on it. Get your defenses units. And now, as you can see here, you can either use the Comanches to attack, Or just get your birds in the air and bomb the hell out of the enemy base. What I do from this point is use the guard command so they will attack the base, it doesn't matter, they will just shoot everything. And you send your payload of planes, 
over there. Also, you can rush with Comanches now. Just storm the enemy base. Also, you may want to target enemy's power plants so that you don't uh, have to worry about any base defenses around. You can disable enemy's radar and super weapon. As you can see here, the planes will always attack, return, reload, come back, and storm the enemy base again. Just always be aware because the enemy, I know it will have enemy units around. Just get your loaded uh, combat chinooks on the way and they will fire and destroy everything. Kill infantry. There's no stopping it. Taking on the GLA is way easier than taking on the Chinese. Simple reason. The GLA uses Stinger sights and you can take Stinger soldiers with their pathfinders. So let's go. You can also transport them in your combat Chinooks so they don't get ambushed on the way. And of course, Charmon Kel will be watching somewhere. But if he shots the pathfinders, you will shot back. Now from here, just attack the Stinger sites, get rid of the Tunnel Network Defenders or RPG Trooper. Now let's get rid of the RPG Troopers. Now that there is no threat besides squad cannons on enemy base, load up a combat Chinook with missile defenders, one or two, whatever, just get a massive army of combat Chinooks and move them to the base and remove any quad cannon present. And after that, get your Comanches and move to the enemy base, not enough. Get your planes to the enemy base and use the guard command to storm it. And from now, there ain't no stopping it. You know, this will be a gold rule for every time you play with Channel Granger. Now, you know that you must worry about the nasty enemy base defenses, right? But here's a little trick. When you're going to build your supply drop zones, always point them to the enemy base. For example, if the enemy is at the east side, I just build them like this, and point to east, and build them. The simple reason is because every time the supply drop plane comes by, he will lead to the enemy base. This will distract enemy base defenses, so they will attack the cargo plane and you should take advantage of it and send your units and attack by that time. So if you are performing any attack, just wait for the plane to come, or planes, which is even better if you have multiple planes going, coming, and just attack when there's a cargo plane flying over the enemy base and distracting their anti-air base defenses. Playing with General Granger is all about the bombing. The only thing you should worry about is the anti-air unit. You don't need to worry about tanks or uh, you know land-based infantry. Just watch out for those anti-air units and you should be fine. Godspeed, General.